Hey Lifesavers and welcome back to my channel. My name is Nurse Kelly Tyrell and in today's video we are going to kick off our pediatric nursing two-week mini-series. So we're going to be covering everything from milestones and development to congenital heart defects and then we'll end with a pediatric nursing NCLEX question review. But before we jump into it, make sure you subscribe to my channel, like, comment, and share this video with a friend and make sure you click that bell icon to turn on notifications so you don't miss out on my upcoming content. If you're looking to gain more confidence in pediatric nursing, then I suggest you keep watching. The biggest difference when caring for an adult patient and a pediatric patient is the rapid and continuous process of growth and development that pediatric patients go through. And I'm sure all of my fellow moms and dads out there can relate to that statement. But because of this rapid growth and development, the nursing care we provide is really going to be tailored around where these pediatric patients are developmentally. So that's why it's going to be really important that you understand the different growth and developmental milestones that way you as the nurse can provide better care so let's start with the development of an infant so the infant period is considered from birth to one year of age and within the first year infants go through several key milestones during certain months so the first month of an infant's life is considered the neonatal period and during this period all of the infants behavior is going to be controlled by involuntary reflex movements so you'll want to make sure that you're familiar with these reflexes and when they start disappearing so that way you can start to spot developmental abnormalities. The most common infant reflexes are the Babinski, the grasp, the morrow, rooting, stepping, and sucking reflexes. The Babinski reflex occurs when you stroke the bottom of the baby's foot and their toes fan outward and their foot actually turns inward. So this reflex should disappear around the 9 to 12 month mark. There are three different type of grasps that you're going to see within the first year. So first you'll see the palmar grasp and that's when you place your uh, finger in the baby's hand they're going to encompass your whole hand uh, with their palm and their fingers. Next, at around four to six months, you'll see the raking graph. So the infants are gonna use their fingers and they're gonna rake um, to scoop things up towards them. And next, you'll see around nine to 10 months, the pincer grasp, where the infant will actually pinch objects with their index finger and their thumb in order to pick things up and bring them to their mouth. Next is the Mara reflex, or it's also known as the startle reflex. So when the infant is startled by a loud noise, they will throw their arms and legs out and then pull them towards their body. And this reflex should disappear around the three to four month mark. Next is going to be that rooting reflex, and it's a really good indicator of when a baby is hungry. So if you stroke the infant's cheek or mouth, they'll turn towards your finger, open their mouth, and try to suck on it. And this reflex will typically disappear also around the three to four um, month mark. Next, you have the stepping reflex. So this occurs when you hold the infant in an upright position. Their legs and feet will start kicking up and down, almost looking like they're attempting to walk, um, but they can't really bear any weight at that point. This reflex will start to go away around three to four months also, and at that point, infants then can start bearing low amounts of weight on their legs to strengthen those leg muscles. And lastly is the sucking reflex. And this reflex is vital to assist the infant with being able to drink breast milk or formula. So if you place a nipple or your finger on the roof of an infant's mouth, then they should immediately start sucking, which will assist with feeding. And this automatic response will also go away around three to four months, although obviously babies will still retain the ability to suck voluntarily. You'll also want to make sure that you're familiar with vital signs during the neonatal period because they are vastly different from normal adult vital signs. So normal vital signs for a neonate will be a heart rate of 110 beats to 160 beats per minute, blood pressure 65 to 41, respiratory rate 30 to 60 breaths per minute. And for respirations, it's really important to remember that breathing is somewhat irregular at this point and will be facilitated by the abdominal muscles. So you'll see the infant's belly move up and down with each breath. The neonate will also be primarily a nose breather, so even a simple cold with a lot of nasal congestion can significantly affect a neonate's breathing. 
And as for temperature, the neonate is going to have a really hard time regulating their own body temperature. So it's really important that you make sure that you as the nurse educate the parents on dressing neonates appropriately um, to help hold in the heat, which will regulate their core body temperature. Okay, so the next age bracket is one to four months old. And at this stage, the posterior fontanelle or one of the soft spots on the infant's head will close. And the infant will also start to hold their own head up and they will learn how to cry to express what they need. Next is five to six months. And at this stage, uh, infants will start being able to roll over from their stomach to their back. And they're also continuing to develop that trust with their parents. And they are recognizing that their parents are their primary care caregivers and they make sure that all of their needs are being met. So at this stage, infants will start crying when their parents or caregivers leave the room. And the infant's birth weight at this point should be doubled. Next is the seven to nine months, and this is where the stranger danger fear will really start setting in. So the infant will know that their parents are different from strangers, and they have a natural distrust for strangers. So during these months, the infants will also be able to sit unsupported. They may start supporting themselves on their hands and knees with their bellies off the floor in preparation for crawling. And they can now verbalize vowels and most constant sounds, but it's still just basic baby babble at this point and the words are not yet quite formed. And the last stage during the first year is between 10 to 12 months, which is where actually my son is at right now. So this stage is where the infant starts to become more and more mobile and they're pulling themselves up on furniture and they start cruising, which means that they sidestep as they hold onto uh, furniture in the room. So they can walk typically with support, either holding onto someone's hand or using a stand behind baby walker. And they can typically uh, say mama and dada, although my son loves saying dada and he rarely says mama, which really isn't fair if he asks me since I birthed him and all. But anyway, that's besides the point. <laughs> And they will also start developing their vocabulary. So some infants at this point will be able to say about five words, but they can usually understand many more words than that. Some other nursing considerations during this age are going to be educating parents on prevention of SIDS uh, through safe infant sleeping. So you wanna make sure that infants are always placed on their back to sleep, and you wanna make sure that they are on a firm mattress. You also wanna educate on car seat safety and that it needs to be rear facing and placed in the middle seat. Also education on the importance of vaccines, especially during the first year, because infants are highly susceptible to different diseases due to their underdeveloped immune system. You also want to assess and educate on nutrition, so encouraging breastfeeding or formula feeding, supplementing with vitamin D drops for breastfed babies, and educate on not introducing cow's milk or honey before the age of one to prevent infant botulism from that honey. Okay, so I know that was a lot of development in the first year, but it starts slowing down somewhat uh, going forward. So let's go ahead and take a look at the development of a toddler between ages one to three. So during this time, that anterior fontanelle closes somewhere around the 12 to 18 month mark. They will also start to experience more separation anxiety when their parents or caregivers leave them. This will also be the age that the toddlers start potty training. So most toddlers will have dryness during the day between 18 months to three years and nighttime dryness from two to five years old. Toddlers can also speak two to four word sentences at this point and they are highly emotional. So when you hear terrible twos, there's actually science behind why toddlers throw tantrums. They're not just doing it to be spiteful because they haven't developed that emotion yet. Tantrums are how toddlers tell you that they're upset or they're frustrated because they haven't learned the ability to control their emotions emotions yet. So despite what most people think, tantrums are actually a very normal and very healthy part of development. And lastly, let's identify normal vital signs for toddlers. So heart rate is going to range anywhere from 70 to 110 beats per minute, blood pressure 90 to 105 over 55 to 70, and respiratory rate of 20 to 30 breaths per minute. 
All right, so moving on to the preschool child, which is from ages three to six years. So during this stage, children may start expressing fears of new experiences, animal noises, and this is when they start being afraid of the dark. So children at this age are usually really curious and they ask a lot of questions about life and death, their surroundings, and how things work in the world. They are developing their emotional intelligence more and more, so they respond really well to logical explanations to their questions. As far as vital signs are concerned, heart rate is going to be 65 to 110, BP 95 to 110 over 60 to 75, and respiratory rate of 20 to 25. Okay, so moving on to school age children, which is from age six to 12 years old. At this age, accidents are a major cause of death and disability, so you want to make sure your nursing care is focused on accident prevention education with the child and the parents. So children at this age will also value playing with their peers, developing a first true friendship, and a sense of belonging. Emotionally, they are continuing to develop and will become more cooperative and more open to compromise with their parents or caregivers. They also start learning how to read and spell at this age. As for normal vital signs, the parameters are going to be heart rate 85 to 95, BP 95 to 120 over 55 to 76, and respiratory rate 17 to 25. And lastly, we have our adolescents, which will be from ages 12 to 18 years old. The major development that occurs during this age is going to be puberty-related changes, so increased hair growth, deepening of voices, and girls will start their menstrual cycles. The Tanner stages is also used to rate the changes of puberty in boys and girls. So boys and girls are rated on a five point scale. Boys are rated for genital development and pubic hair growth and girls are rated for breast development and pubic hair growth. At this age, peers are going to become the primary influence on behaviors and values. As for vital signs at this age, they're going to be approaching those adult normal values. So um, the heart rate is gonna be 65 to 85. The blood pressure is gonna be 118 to 120 over 70 to 80 and respiratory rate is gonna be 15 to 20 breaths per minute. So hopefully now you have a better understanding of how pediatric patients will go through growth and development and how you as the nurse can tailor your care based on where your patients are at in that stage of development. So make sure you come back for tomorrow's lecture because I'm going to break down some different cardiovascular disorders and nursing care in pediatric patients. And that concludes the end of this lesson. I hope that you found this information extremely valuable and it made you just a little more confident as you prepare to take your NCLEX or your next nursing school exam. I just wanna thank you all again so much Lifesavers for tuning in today. My name is Nurse Kelly Tyrell and I help nurses feel more confident, increase their test scores and retain what they don't remember in nursing school. Speaking of, are you a nursing student or soon to be or ready to take your NCLEX? If so, have you joined my online student community yet? If not, then what are you waiting for? The university community is a complete nursing resource hub all at your fingertips. Inside, you can expect to receive coaching, community, and content. You'll get daily coaching with your mobile mentor, me, Nurse Kelly Tyrell. You'll also receive access to weekly educational videos that you can watch months before they even publish to YouTube. You'll also get exclusive printable digital downloads like worksheets, quizzes, flashcards, infographics, cheat sheets, skills checklists, and more. And if this video helped you in any way, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on my upcoming content. Also, if you can do me a favor and drop me a comment below, let me know where you're at with your nursing journey. I'd love to just say hi and connect with you. Also, make sure you click that share icon to spread the word and encourage a fellow aspiring nurse. And last but not least, when you are ready to take your NCLEX, be sure to check out my NCLEX and Chill review, where I review detailed test taking strategies and cover every major topic that you can expect to find on the NCLEX. If you want to have that unfair advantage and pass your NCLEX on your very next attempt, be sure to click the link in the description box below. Not ready to end the study sesh yet? Well, you you are in luck because if you stick around, you can watch more of my videos coming at you in three, two, one. Bye, Lifesavers.